Hi guys, welcome back to GK Code Labs. This is our next session in Apache Spark series. As a part of this session, I have thought of uh, analyzing a real-time data that is a crime data from Chicago Data Portal. And we'll be analyzing this. We'll be taking one example use case. And with the help of Spark data frames, we'll try to get some useful outcome out of that uh, huge data. So for your reference, this is uh, Chicago data portal. This will be the crime data from the Chicago data portal. I'll share this link in the description below. Let us quickly see what this data is all about and uh, some details and what will we actually handle once we take this data into Spark. So this is the updated data as of today. You can see we have almost 7.08 million records. Totally 22 column as uh, the schema of this uh, data set. These are all the columns. So uh, from here we cannot make out much of the um, columns and what uh, which columns will be more useful to us. So it's better to get this into our system and uh, then see what, what columns are uh, useful for our use case. So I have already downloaded this data. You can see here this is almost 1.5 GB. If you want to analyze this you can download it. To download it you can go uh, on the top export and export as CSV. This will take a while as I told you it is 1.5 GB. So once you have this data downloaded into your system, let's get started with analyzing the same into our Spark data frames. So I have pretty much made the boilerplate code. This is uh, nothing much, just I have uh, imported the Spark SQL libraries and created a Spark session. And just in case we need, uh, I have taken a Spark context as well from the same Spark session object. Once you have this uh, data set, um, you should be aware, uh, does this have a header or not? So I am on the Windows machine in case uh, you are on Linux. We have a pretty much concise command uh, that is head, which can give you a top few lines of uh, file. But as I am in Windows, there are some alternate uh, CMD commands as well. But uh, I'll not go into that because we have already Spark at our disposal. So no need to worry about that. So just we have to see the top few lines of this data. So what will I do? Um, we'll create the data frames, but uh, just to see few lines of that, just we can read it using the Spark context only. So with the Spark context, if I want to read this, I'll create val data equals sc dot text file. And here I can give the path to this file. So this will give an RDD from that data. And to check upper few lines of RDD, we can do data dot, let's say take top, let not required, three lines are enough for each println. That should be fine. So let's try to run this. I haven't created main method. So let me extend app which will provide us the main method and run this. So you can see here we got the output and from the first three lines we can see this file has the header as well. So we can use the same we don't need to define any schema otherwise we could have go, gone for uh, struct type or case classes but we already have it. So our RDD work is over let me remove this. Now let's create a data frame. So val crime df will be using the spark session object dot read and as we already have the header let us give some options dot option header will be true again dot option let's go with infer schema let's see what uh, it infers in case there is some issue uh, we don't get the correct inference or the correct interpretation that spark does we'll cast it to whatever we require so infer schema true and then what we can give uh, i think that's enough uh, dot csv and the path sorry i removed the path dot csv path fine that's it let's see what we got so crime df dot show well, let's take top three again and also let's see the schema for this 
so crime df dot print schema okay so top three rows uh, this is the format as we saw there are around 22 columns here with all these headers so fine we all in all got uh, our data set or data frame now let us take a use case you can see here we have date and we have the crime type so let us have a small use case that we want month wise this is the entire timestamp but we want month wise count for each type of crime for example let me show you here uh, the data how we want is day one so in day one how many crime suppose crime one crime two all these are different crimes and suppose this is for all day one and what are the count for day one what was the count for crime one what was the count for crime two what was the count for crime three what was the count for crime four something like that and same thing for day two so we want uh, the data day wise and then crime wise and their count and let's add one more uh, requirement as well uh, that the count for each day should be in uh, descending order and all the days should be in ascending order so from the smallest day day one day two day two should not come on the top day one then day two and among this day one all the crime should be uh, in the descending order this is not the ideal case that we want uh, this 700 should be on the top something like that hope the use case is clear to you now let's go back and see what we have uh, and what actual columns do we need so first obviously date there's something that we need and uh, the crime type so first let's see so first thing to learn here is uh, how to fetch um, required columns from a data frame so how do we do that let's make another data frame val required data and the way you can extract the required columns from this data frame is the data frame name that was crime df dot select and what column do you want first is date and second is primary type And let's now print the required data and the schema for this as well. So fine, we got our uh, required data that is date and the crime type. So this is first takeaway for you that how you can extract the required columns. Now uh, let's see the schema for this as well. So you can see here date is taken as the string primary type is string that is acceptable but date um, what if we want to sort it in some way and uh, there is another thing like uh, you can treat it as, as a string as only and then you can use uh, split functions or substring functions and play around with that but that is not a ideal thing because uh, if it is a date uh, there are very less chances of getting some error if you consider it only date as it is. Uh, if you consider it as a string and I mean that is not optimal. So the second learning for you can be in cases of timestamp columns. How do you uh, play around with that? So let's do something that this date comes as a timestamp. So what we can do. Um, first of all, you can see this is not the ideal timestamp. The ideal uh, ideally timestamp uh, format should be um, something like uh, this. Why? Why? mm dd hh you can understand right so there is no slashes in ideally uh, what uh, we consider uh, as a timestamp so this is something custom but uh, we can handle it so let's see how we can uh, change this to a timestamp for making the change into any of the column there is a very useful api that is with column so let's make another data frame date as ts now we will take the required data then with column so with column takes a column name so column name can be any new uh, column name in case you want to add a new column apart from this 
but if as you uh, you want to edit the previous column itself just leave it as the previous column name column name that is now going to be made and with comma whatever operation we want to do on any previous column so for our, so in our case the new column is also same because this is only going to be changed and the previous column that we are going to uh, work upon that is also the same it's fine to give the date column itself on both the sides and how you access the existing column is call and this call is the part of spark sql functions so you have to import that as well spark sql dot functions dot call so you can see the error is gone but call which call that is a date hope that is clear so in this case what will happen is the value of this column will go into this column and both the columns are same so there is no use of this but for the existing value that is the timestamp but not our required timestamp we have to make some changes for making this change to interpret the da date uh, note this carefully to interpret a timestamp in whatever format uh, is given you can use a unix timestamp i think that is also another uh, function of spark sql function so we can import that as well unix timestamp now it will prompt us sorry it was a call and this column we can uh, bind around unix timestamp what unix timestamp takes is the value that we are expecting in some other timestamp that is this one and then we can define what is actually this timestamp so this timestamp is in the format mm dd yyy and separated by hours minutes and seconds so this is the format so what unix timestamp will do this will take if you want to see this is the argument that unix timestamp has taken first will be the value of whatever timestamp you are giving to it and then you can define what format is actually it is now it will infer all the month date and year correctly okay so earlier this date was a string and now we have taken that string and converted it into a recognizable format with unit unix timestamp and now to cast it as a timestamp we can use a cast function and we can cast it to timestamp and here i think uh, we are missing a bracket parenthesis let me bring it down so it's readable so this is the way you can cast it and whatever arguments we are passing into these if you are using intellij it's very easy to think like uh, what if you want a timestamp what values to pass you can uh, press control and click on this to see the definition of this so cast you can see here it accepts date timestamp decimal double whatever you want it to cast as so if you have any confusion you can clearly go into the definition of any function so now let's see let's run this and see what is the timestamp of the date now it's same oh i'm sorry uh, because i uh, saved the altered uh, data set into date asts i need to check the values for the same so now you can see the data type of this uh, date is a timestamp and you can see the format has also changed how the format has changed because we took it into the readable format and finally casted it to timestamp so now we have got the date in uh, standard timestamp format so i hope till here it is clear now what is our use case day 1 and uh, uh, but i believe this is such a huge data so we should not take it by day because if you can see here it is crime data since 
2001 till present so almost 20 years of data so will be if it will take by day it will be too much so let's take month wise month 1 so let's have the data month wise and similarly for month 2 just for the reducing the complexity i am doing this because there will be no use because uh, if we take it as day wise neither will be able to see that we are getting the correct thing or uh, either neither will be able to handle that in our local environment or saving it to some file so month wise will make more sense so let's see how we can get the month so this is a time stamp what what if we want to take the month out of this or the date out of this but anyways if we want to sort it uh, month wise uh, what we can do we can add one column so third learning in this use case is how to add one another column uh, with operating something on the existing column so suppose we want to um, operate on the date and just take the month month is nothing but the year hyphen the next two characters this is the month 2001 january so this is the month so how to extract this and create another uh, column so we'll take another data frame let's make it required data required data with month and we have the correct values in our date asts date asts dot again with column as i told you this is a very useful api um in first we saw the use of uh, changing ex existing column and now we are uh, checking how we can uh, add a new column with with column api so again the first column will be the new column that is to be added that let's say month and what goes into this month uh, that will be whatever we have in column sorry column date in double quotes and what to do with that we have to take substring here because uh, we don't need the entire date uh, just the month part we need so let's take the substring from let's say this will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 0 2 i think that should work and let's close it and let's see what we got into this now we don't need the print schema now so there we go we are getting the month exactly now to get the count um, we can use normal sql queries we have to obviously group by both uh, the crime type i mean primary type and month and then we we have to get the count if you can see here we have to group by both first by month then by crime then only we can get the complete count of uh, the crimes so what we can do let's take one more example here uh, suppose you want to change the name of this column because you can see here uh, now we'll be using sql queries anyways we can uh, use the column name with spaces also in sql queries but uh, for convenience let's see there is a use case and we want to change this primary type to primary underscore type something like that what what we can do here itself let me do why to create another data frame dot with column the existing column name that is primary type and whatever the changed name you want to keep for it that will be uh so uh, for renaming uh, there is another api with column renamed so this is what you have to use you can see the definition also automatically came in intellij existing name and a new name so if for renaming you have an another api with column renamed so here you have a new column name now for using sql queries like uh, we have the requirement for grouping and sorting let's register this as a temporary table so that we can use this data frame uh, in sql queries so what we can do require data frame 
create or replace temp view and give any uh, view name final table now let's see what we have to do val final df for grouping this now first you have uh, now first when you have to run the sql queries s spark dot sql use this function of the spark session and then as a string you can pass the sql query so what we need here is select we don't need the date here right so we will leave it what we need is first is month we need month and what else we need primary type and then we need the count so to count uh, you can pass count anything uh, any column value you can count or uh, easy way is count one these are the sim similar sql queries if you are aware let's give an alias for count so we can give count per crime per date and for getting this aggregated count we have to group it so group by so first grouping has to be done with month and also with the primary type so let's see what we get here we got some error it seems cannot resolve month oh i think i missed to give a from statement let me give from final table now let's so you can see here we are getting the data by month and then uh, the primary type that is robbery and then the count but uh, one requirement is still not fulfilled that is it should be in ascending order of month and then the descending order of the count as we have sql here so we can easily do it by order by order by month so month by default it is it is ascending and uh, second order by will be count per crime per date and with this we want a descending count so hopefully now we will get and as this is so much of data so i don't think we'll be able to see that here but anyways let's say top 20 we'll also see how we can save this uh, data to file system so we you can see we got a descending order of the crime count so all is 0 1 as you can see there are many different varieties of crime uh, crime type so um, there is no chance for us to view that here uh, but let us save it into some uh, file system and then we will see are we getting the correct uh, output as expected so another takeaway for you from this session is how you can save this data to a file system so our final data is in final df so you can save it to a file system by the data frame dot write api so it's simple to remember for reading you you, you use uh, spark dot read and for writing you use the data frame dot write api then comes in what format you want to write it you want to write in parquet or orc or csv for now let's just uh, write it in a csv so for csv we have couple of more options that we can set we have an option to set so option and what option we can give first uh, we we can give the separator what we want let's say we want uh, this data to be written into the file uh, by pipe separated so you can use a sept keyword and pass the value for this as the delimiter whatever you want and another option that you can pass is uh, do you want the header of this also as well uh, in the files so if you want you can pass header as true and then again it's fine uh, for csv and let's say we want to 
save this somewhere here only so let me create another so there is an output directory already and here uh, for just remember for this to save any output this will not be saved into a single file as you know um, this uh, spark uh, computes and uh, gathers all the data in form of uh, different executors that do the work uh, so this data is always saved into the part files so you need to dedicate an entire directory for whenever you are using the write option so whatever path you are giving here that path should not exist because this way this is going to create that particular file for example if i give this particular path uh, we will get an error because the path you are seeing the final that is outputs that directory already exist so this will not use this directory because either it is empty or not it cannot use because it already exists what if uh, there is or there may be not some data it is not going to consider and it will throw an error but we want the data here so this will create another directory what we whatever we will specify here so let's create a directory like csv only but this entire path entire path means the final uh, value should be a folder and that should not exist just keep that in mind and now we don't want to see the data let's just run it it should be using quite a while of your resources uh, because this is a huge data set so our job is finished so now let's go and see our output files so inside this as i told you this will create a directory you can see here it has created uh, many files you can just ignore this crc files and just consider the csv file because we saved it in uh, csv format let's just open any one of them so you can see here uh, it has header it is pipe delimited with the same column names sorry and uh, the data for this is for sixth month uh, let's say for seventh month the data is in descending format and the dates are in ascending order first sixth uh, 2019 was there then comes seventh you will see the data in ascending order of the month and descending order of the crime count so guys that was all for this session i hope you liked this video uh, if you really did please hit that like button and please stay tuned to gk code labs for upcoming use case based scenarios thank you guys see you later <laughs>